I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? This is Matt once again. We're about to another review, and this is for Lucas. It's a PayPal request. If anyone wants reviews of movies or something else, re reviews, topics, reactions, lists, pretty much any type of video, you'd request it either directly send it to my PayPal or draw my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And I apologize if you hear noise. The AC is on. It's just way too fucking hot, and I need it. It's hot in Texas. But Tremor Shrieker Island. 2020 film because now we have seven Tremors movies. Now I love Tremors 1. That's one of my personal favorites. I love Tremors 2 Aftershocks. It needs a better Blu-ray. It needs a Blu-ray of features and better picture quality honestly. Tremors 2 Aftershocks needs a new Blu-ray. I love that film. I think that's one of the better direct-to-video sequels of any franchise. Fred Ward, Christopher Garden, Michael Gross has more to do. The Shrieker aspect. I thought that was a nice uh, addition to the mythology of the Graboids. Tremors 3 is when it started dwindling down. But you did not need seven movies and one TV show and then this TV pilot with Kevin Bacon which that didn't even come to be. Which I find funny. Like Kevin Bacon comes up back. You don't release it. But you do release this. And honestly this is one of those movies that I, I can't say I hated it. To be fair. But the ending ruined the kind of I'm like, okay, this is flawed, but I'm not minding it. And then the ending kind of ruined the buzz. The ruined the good vibes. Uh, I really did not like the ending. I frankly, I thought the ending fucking sucked ass. You know what? Fuck it. I'm going to spoil the ending for those who have not seen Tremor Shrieker Island. You have been warned. And you know what? I'm going to do this. When this is turned around, I'll go back to I won't the ending spoilers will be over when I turn this back so three two one how this fucking movie ends Burt Gummer dies yeah Michael Gross dies his character because they try to do the theme like Val and Earl where uh, Kevin Bacon lets the grab boy go off the cliff they do that again but it's him and uh, John Heater running he pushes John Heater out of the way, which seemed like John Heater was going to get out of the way anyway. It looks like the way it's filmed, because Don Michael Paul did a shit job with this, it looks like Michael Gross jumped into the fucking thing, does this, and gets swallowed up. Now, granted, it's not the first time he's been swallowed up by a grab boy, Tremors 3. But then it goes off a cliff into a pit out of Mortal Kombat where there's a shitload of explosives, and then psh, Explosives the size of Hiroshima, and then it ends with John Heater and some of the other characters having a gravesite for Burt Gummer, putting his Chicago hat on. On the grave. Then it goes to the end credits where it's showing clips from all the Tremors films showing Burt Gummer. Then there's a fucking text. This is what got me the most, in a weird way. 
Celebrate Burgummer Day on April 14th. And don't forget to pay your taxes. So you kill off a tear do you treat it as a fucking joke? And one of two things going to happen. Let's be honest. Number one, they're going to make another Tremors film. And they're going to create some bullshit reasons to how he's alive. Which will make no goddamn sense. But you're not supposed to make sense because it's Tremors 8. But still, it's be like, he was swallowed. Okay, he's been swallowed before. But then it's a fucking landing in the head of spikes. Then there's a sh- big old fucking explosion. What is the explanation going to be? Well, the inside of this particular grab board, because it's genetically modified, was able to rift stain... Somehow it was not impaled and it was staying this big Mundus fucking blast. It's going to be either a bunch of fucking horse shit that will insult insult the audience, Matt. Is Tremor 7. Yes, I will say that. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to say it. Or two, there's going to be no more Tremors films and you kill them off. When you had an opportunity, just let them go off in the sunset. Just the fucking movie is about... One of the aspects is that his ex... A girl, this girl he was with is one of the scientists. The girl that he had, uh, Jamie Kennedy, who's his son in five and six. If you if you really don't kill a bird gummer, wouldn't you want Jamie Kennedy, the son character, back? Which I don't know why Jamie Kennedy's not in this. It seems like even Jamie Kennedy doesn't know why he's not in this. Maybe he wanted too much money? I don't know. So... The fact that you kill all Bert Gummer is bullshit. But then it's like, oh, he's not really dead. And it's going to be some convoluted, stupefying, insulting dumbassness. Or he's killed off in a bullshit way. And I'm like, fucking really? Well, no, don't give me this fucking... He did, no, I'm tired of that shit. They, they said that with fucking Logan. They said it with all this other shit. I'm tired of it. They said that with Captain Kirk and Star Trek Generations. They said that with Ripley and Alien 3. With Luke Skywalker and Last Jedi. I'm tired of that fucking explanation. If you like it, cool. Doesn't mean I fucking have to. So, I was enjoying the film. By that ending, made it fucking bullshit. But, anyway... So other than that, I mean, there are flaws with the film, but there were mo- there are elements of it I like more than six and five, and perhaps even four. Just part three, eh. Part four, not big on the taking place in the Wild West. It's just not my cup of tea, story-wise. Part five in Africa, that's when you got Don Michael Paul, the director of Who's Your Caddy. And part six... That might be the worst one because that's when Bert Gummer, he was sick because of this venom because he was swallowed by a graboid before in Tremors 3. And now, after all these years, after all these years, he's now sick from it. And then he's out of the action for a bit. And then the whole point's in the snow. But then there's barely any fucking snow. So it makes you go, why the fuck was this even part of the... Oh, it was part of the marketing, not really the story. Okay, well, it's at the beginning. Yeah, and then that disappears real fucking quick. Because there's a heat wave. <laughs> now, the gist of the story is kind of like Jurassic Park, but with Graboids and Shriekers. It takes place on an island. Richard Brake, he was the bad guy in 31. He was the uh, Rob Zombie's film. He was the asshole in Doom with the Rock who got killed and dragged in up to the ceiling in the bathroom. He had one scene with Nicholas Cage and Mandy. <clears throat> Richard Brake I don't mind as a, as an actor, as a personality. He plays a guy who invites rich people to hunt. He set this up on this island. He has graboids there and some of them will grow to be shriekers. Which I don't know how the fuck this guy doesn't know about shriekers because in this universe and after Tremors 2, Fred Ward and Christopher Garden made Monster World, which they deal with Shriekers. Like this. People would know this shit existed. That's part of the gist of these movies is that this stuff gets found out and everyone knows about it. But, but for some reason, he doesn't know what the fuck Shriekers are. Like no one 
Except Burt Gummer knows what the hell a shrieker is. Which doesn't make any sense to me. Does then you have to explain what a shrieker is again? I'm like, why does no one know about this? After all these years and... <laughs> That'd be like after fucking Jurassic World, no one knows that dinosaurs... Fucking dinosaurs exist or something. I don't know. Just so I, this anyway. So of course, things go awry. There's an island nearby where there's some scientists doing some stuff, including a woman who is a former lover, Michael Gross. She's the one who gave birth to Jamie Kennedy's character in Five and Six. I don't know why Jamie Kennedy is not in this movie. I don't even think Jamie Teddy himself, Kennedy knows himself why he's not in this movie. It's kind of weird because, like, did even Jamie Teddy say no to this? Did they not offer him any mon enough money for it? I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. So instead, you have John Heater, Napoleon Dynamite. He's in the movie as a scientist. And it doesn't help that the first fucking scene, he falls off a hammock and goes... Oh, fart in a bag. I'm like, what the fuck is that? John Heater, I don't mind John Heater. But if you don't like John Heater, this is not going to change your opinion. And even with me saying I don't mind John Heater, every performance he makes, it just seems like another version of Napoleon Dynamite. And I love Napoleon Dynamite. A lot of people do not like that film. I am one of those that do. That's if I really like Napoleon Dynamite. But the flaw of that is anytime John Heater works, all you think is that Napoleon Dynamite persona. And that has limited his career. He'll get known because of Napoleon Dynamite, but that's why he doesn't work probably as much as other people. And that's why he probably didn't find as much big success as other people because that demeanor, that's the only one you're thinking. And if there are a lot of people who don't like that movie. Again, I do. So that limited his uh, status, at least to a point. There's a certain level he could only reach because of that. So again, if you don't like John Heater, I don't see this performance winning you over. If you don't mind him, aside from some stupid lines, he does all right for me. He did fine. I, I didn't mind him. One of the aspects that made this better than 5 and 6 was I thought they used the locations very well of the island. The beautiful looking locales. Beautiful looking island. It was a nice looking movie. Like it, it seemed like they really did shoot on f these fucking islands. And again, the way they're photographed and again looks fairly good. I like that they bring back the shriekers, because it seemed like a while that you did not see them. Maybe not. Maybe maybe that's not the case, but. You see, like for the past couple, it was just grab boys and these ass blasters. So the shrieker's being utilized, although there's really no practical effects, which I don't understand. Tremors 2 Aftershocks at least had some practical effects mixed in there. So I don't get that. And the reason I say it reminds me a little bit of Jurassic Park is that there are moments where they're on the island and you see something going through the trees. If you substitute the Shriekers for Raptors, it would be like Jurassic Park or the, the Lost World Jurassic Park 2 or, or whatever. <clears throat> so I didn't compare it to the previous two or so that Don Michael Paul did, the director, again, of Who's Your Caddy. The locales were nice. Michael Gross felt like he had a bit more to do, especially compared to the previous one where he was just out of the movie for a bit because of this venomous poison and part six whole day in hell i like michael gross john Heater does the best that he uh, he does fine not the best that he can but he does fine richard break as sort of your human villain he fits the role i thought he had some decent moments between him and michael gross So I'm like, okay, I don't mind some of these actors and the environment. Are there flaws? Fuck yeah. yeah the, C the huge amounts of CGI, the 
some of the deaths. I mean, one guy gets pulled down the shitter. And part of me is like, well, that's appropriate because the franchise has been pulled down the shitter. When Burt Gummer arrives to help the people and there's his, I guess, ex-girlfriend you would call her and and John Heater, they, he shows a video of his survival. For some reason, there's actual footage from Tremors and Tremors 2. I don't know how the fuck Burt Gummer got the footage from Tremors 1 and 2, but uh, apparently he did and put it in his uh, promotional material. But there's at times really bad lines of dialogue. One random character says, Oh man, I got the serious case of swamp bass going on here. I'm like, you just, just go die. Go somewhere and squat and die. Or die and squat. Or both. Um, it's a new version of Shriekers where now they can scream and it's like fucking Banshee from X Men comics. Like, ah, you know, you hurts apparently stuns you with their their shrieking but then you once in a while you get a decent moment what I mean by that you know there's moments where you get Michael Gross firing a flamethrower at shriekers whether in the middle of the the I don't want to call it the jungle but in the middle of the greenery or there's a moment in the third out with him and John Heater going to this cave system to kill Shriekers. And John Heater has a chainsaw. And Michael Gross has a flamethrower or machetes. That's a fun sequence. That's actually one of the better sequences, aside from the CGI. But that's actually one of the better sequences of action compared to 6 and 5 or even 4. I actually don't mind that moment. You know, there's a moment where Michael Gross throws a knife into one. Then John Heater uses a chainsaw. And, uh, you know, moments like that were fine. There's some decent usage usage of slow mo. Uh, Don Michael Pole, Pole, yeah. At times he gets suck my pole. No, I'm just kidding. Not really, but I am. But not really, but I am. Uh, okay, in all seriousness, no, joking aside, I don't know the guy as a person. He could be a very nice guy. It's just, as a director, I just don't know why he's the gatekeeper now of this franchise. Because he did five, six in this one. And granted, like I will repeat, this is better than the previous two. Maybe that's not saying much. And, you know, blowing up some graboids or, you know, the, blow up this bunker to kill one graboid. But I was saying, Don Michael Paul is really in love with slow-mo. And you know what? In this case, that was fine. There's some good moments of slow motion, and to be fair, in the previous films, there were moments he used slow mo as well. Basically, he used it even more here. And I will be honest, there were moments of effectiveness. <coughs> when Michael Gross is shooting the flamethrower and killing the shriekers in slow mo, that was cool. Moments outside when the grab boys are going through the ground, you see the rubble spilling upward. And Michael Gross or someone is running. Those were nicely shot moments, to be fair. So, as a part seven, yes, the island location, not minding John Heater, not minding Richard Brake, the human villain. Michael Gross definitely felt like he had more to do here compared to the previous film. Getting a bit more use use. Usage of Shriekers compared to the last couple films. The flamethrower chainsaw sequence was entertaining on its own right. But less reliance on practical, more reliance on CGI hurts it for the creatures. The the script is definitely not on the level of SS Wilden Wilden Wilden. SS Wilson and Matt the guys who wrote the pre the first couple of Tremors films is definitely not on the level of that with people talking about I got swamp ass and all that shit or uh, what the I'm trying to think whatever the fuck other lines there were oh yeah John Hughes first one the oh fart in the bag whether that was he made it up or was in the script it sucked either way but any goodwill. You get that shitty fucking ending. 
which if you didn't hear before, I'll say it now. Spoilers. Again, where they don't do the, they've killed the shriekers. There's this one left who's modified, genetically modified, coming at them, going to go off the cliff, has a trap where there's pits, a spike pit lab, more combat, and explosives. They're running. It seems like they're doing fine and ready to get out of the way. So, just pushes John here out of the way, does this, gets swallowed, looks like shit a wise, and then... If gets impaled, then it blows up. And like I said, either A, he's still alive, and there's no fucking reason why he could be alive, but they'll pull something out of their ass, or B... This is how he dies, and to me, you didn't need to do that in a Tremor 7. I'm sorry. Tremor 7, to me, is that where you put, try to put a fucking emotional death of a major character. People call me foolish for thinking that way. But it's also, of course, ironic that the one I was liking more than the previous has the shittiest ending. So either they make another one and it makes the ending of this pointless or they make another one and it's a reboot and then Bird Gummer's dead and I'm like, that fucking sucks. Yeah, I'm sorry that I would actually like a happy end to a character I like. I know that I should be ashamed for thinking that. Well, not every character has a happy ending. Well, it seems like more times than not, they're going the opposite way, don't you think? <coughs> Rocky Balboa has everyone who loved dies and has fucking cancer. Lou Skywalker died. Han Solo died. William, uh, Captain Kurt died. Ellen Ripley died. <laughs> Is that you don't do that for this too? Give me a break, man. And then on top of that, the fact that they treat it as a fucking joke. When you're doing the end credits showing the montage of him and other the other Tremors films, and then you put the text, Celebrate Bird Gummer Day on April 14th, and don't forget to pay your taxes. So you treat it as a fucking joke, and, well, Matt, you need to have a sense of humor. So does this movie. Because some of his sense of humor didn't quite land on the fucking path. It crashed and burned. So I don't even know if this is a rant or a review. There's elements of it I liked. There's elements of it I thought were not as good. Or this is a franchise that's way past its expiration date. All they're doing is just what random location can we pick now? What next? The moon? Is that what's going to be? Tremors in space? Tremors on the fucking moon? And it's going to be like moon trap? Like, is that what it's going to be? In the ocean? Is it going to be like fucking water world but with tremors? Is that what next? Oh, a city. It's going to be a city and it's going to be in the vein of what? Sharknado? Or what was that fucking one with Steve Boomer? Lava Lantula? It's going to be one of those uh, asylum type of productions but it's going to be in the city I am shot they have not done a city one like San Francisco they don't have the budget neither did fucking Sharknado and stuff but they do it their way <laughs> so I, I would not be surprised it's in some fucking city would not be fucking shot or maybe this is the end you didn't need you, you only needed two movies if he did a third one, maybe two, three years later with Kevin Bacon, Fred Ward, Michael Gross, and instead of ass blasters, because I always thought that was a ridiculous, where they fart out to fucking fly, I think we could have done a bit better than that. So that, that's what I'm like, but after Tremors 3, the fucking TV show showed that you could not do much with this concept. Just in the TV show, one season... By the end, they were running out of fucking ideas to do. Because there's only so much you could do. So now it's like, let's create as many fucking different monsters or this this fog-like 
what was a gas fog like creature and this create a funny device that you just because of this thing with Christopher Lloyd that he knows about it creates all these The music is completely unremarkable and forgettable. And the music for the first two films are good. The first one and the second one. And the first score is great too. It just, you look at the first two films, you look at how the characters and the way the characters are written. There's genuinely fun, solid movies. And you just see how it's been dwindled into just. And this isn't even the worst of the bunch. But the ending, you know, just got me riled up with it. And some stupid lines and, like, lack of practical effects. And it at times feels like it wants to be Jurassic Park. So is this a rant or review? I don't fucking know at this point. You take your pick. So, yeah, it is what it is. So... I mean, there's a line of dialogue that says, that ass clown's a skid mark on our collective underwear. And they did that to Michael Gross to say, hey, Michael Gross, you're a good actor. Say this line, okay? That ass clown's a skid mark on our collective underwear. Yeah, skid mark is right. Maybe this franchise needs to change its fucking shorts because he's starting to stink. This way it stinks. I don't know. I don't know. Part of me is like, yeah, go make a part A. See whatever bullshit reason you gave for Michael Gross being alive. Let him have his son and the ex-wife. Let him have a happy ending. It's not against the fucking law for characters to do that. I don't know why there's so much against the fucking law. Yes, it's my personal taste. But... Whose else's taste am I going to talk about? Yours? Why am I going to talk about your taste? This is my opinion. With that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.